Hello and welcome to a video field guide to beekeeping. In this episode, I'll be discussing European and American fowl brood, two pathogens recognized by bee scientists in the early 1900s to kill developing and immature honeybees. American and European fowl brood are bacterial diseases that have been plaguing beekeepers, bees, for a very long time. Both bacteria were actually identified in the early 1900s, around 1906. But the names American and European fowl brood have nothing to do with the origin of the bacteria, but rather with the origin of the person who identified the bacteria. American fowl brood was identified by Americans and European fowl brood was identified by European scientists. What's important to note about these bacteria is first that they don't affect anything except honeybees, specifically Apis mellifera, or the European races or African races of honeybees. Consequently, both bacteria occur almost everywhere that Apis mellifera is kept around the world. Because of that, both diseases are a worldwide problem for beekeepers. <laughs> European fowl brood tends to not be as bad a problem for beekeepers in their colonies as American fowl brood, but there are some similarities in its life cycle and that of American fowl brood. European fowl brood, again caused by a bacterium, also infects little developing larvae or larvae that are less than about 24 hours old. Now this is key because it infects the same age as the larvae that are infected by American fowl brood. However, with European fowl brood there are some key differences. First of all, the bacterium typically kills the developing larva rather than the pupa and prepupa. So as such, larva about four to five days old will die from this bacterium and in fact will start turning yellow or brown and begin to twist in their cells. We'll discuss that more later when we talk about the symptoms of the disease. Another key difference between American and European fowl brood though is that European fowl brood does not create spores. So this bacteria that's in this vegetative state, once it disappears, it's gone. So it doesn't typically kill colonies like American fowl brood does, and it certainly doesn't persist in colonies like American fowl brood does. Because of that, it's one of the diseases that bees typically can take care of themselves if a good strong honey flow comes in or if a colony is requeened. <laughs> Important to understanding how to control any bee disease or pest is understanding how to recognize when you have that problem. First, we're going to talk about the symptomology associated with European fowl brood, probably because it's the easier of the two to understand. Now, if you remember, European fowl brood typically kills bees or developing larvae that are four to five days old. As such, these are larvae that have not been capped over yet. The best way to appreciate what a sick larva looks like is to understand what a healthy larva looks like. Now a healthy developing honeybee larva lies in the bottom of a cell in the shape of a letter C. That's why we call them C-shaped larva. And when you look at that larva in the bottom of the cell, that larva should be not twisted, should be glistening and pearly white. The reason I tell you this is because European fowl brood does the opposite to all the larvae. The larvae are yellow brown, they're not glistening any longer, and they're twisted in the cell. Also associated with European fowl brood is a smell. That's where American and European fowl broods get their names from, are the foul smell associated with the diseases. So European fowl brood has a very characteristic uh, rank smell. It's really probably the smell of decaying brood in the cells. Now American fowl brood is a little bit more complicated to diagnose than European fowl brood because there are other symptoms from other diseases that kind of match up with those of American fowl brood. Now if you remember, American fowl brood infects larvae but kills prepupa or pupa. 
as such, automatically, you're not going to be able to recognize it as easily because you're having to recognize the disease through a cell capping, which leads me to the first symptom of American fowl brood. The capping of the cell is usually perforated or sunken. Now, if you look at a cell from the side view, the capping of that cell typically has a dome shape in a healthy cell. American fowl brood will cause that cell capping to be sunken. Now the bees recognizing that there's a problem in that cell typically bite small holes in the capping of that cell or puncture marks. These are the first signs to a beekeeper that there may be a problem with the developing prepupa or pupa in that cell. The next thing you need to do is just look for those puncture cappings, remove them, and look inside the cell. Now American fowl brood kills that developing individual inside the cell. As that bee dies, it shrivels up and sinks from the bottom to from the top of the cell to the bottom of that cell. So for example, if you see a frame here, these are cells on the frame. Now, the back of the cell is back there. That's not the bottom of the cell. The bottom of the cell is the curved part like that, this part here. Now, as that bee dies, it shrivels down to the bottom of the cell and forms a hard scale. So this is a characteristic symptom of American fowl brood is that scale. You can't see it if you look at the frame face on. Rather, you have to tilt the frame such that you're looking into the bottom of the cell. Not the back of the cell, but the bottom of the cell. And you'll look for those scales. Incidentally, this is a symptom that you can look for in equipment that you purchase from other beekeepers. If you're concerned that you're buying equipment that has American fowl brood, just look in those cells for the left behind scales. Those scales are simply bees that have been dead for a long time and the adult bees have been unable to clean them out. Another symptom associated with American fowl brood is the pupil tongue. Not really the tongue at all, but what happens is that bee dies in that cell and shrivels down away from the top of the cell. It leaves behind part of its anatomy stuck to the top of the cell. It looks like its tongue. Another symptom associated with American fowl brood is the ropey test. Now, you find one of those punctured cell cappings, you remove the capping, you see the dead bee on the inside. Take a small stick or a piece of straw, stir around that dead bee and pull it out. If you pull it out and there's a ropiness or a stringiness attached to that stick, then it's likely American fowl brood. European fowl brood and other diseases, on the other hand, when you stir the dead bee and pull it out, it doesn't have that ropiness associated with it. And finally, American fowl brood, of course, as the name implies, like European fowl brood, also stinks. Now, European fowl brood and American fowl brood have this different smells, but it's really difficult to tell you how to recognize the difference. It's one of those things that you just have to experience. The good thing about American fowl brood is that many states have state apiary inspection programs designed specifically to help beekeepers find American fowl brood. Here today to talk to us about the state program in the state of Florida is Mr. Jerry Hayes, chief of the apiary section of the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. As Jamie has just uh, explained to you, uh, there are many pest predators and diseases, and especially American fowl brood, which is so devastating to honeybee colonies that you should be aware of and that you should control, not only to be successful beekeepers, but also to stop the spread of these diseases throughout the state of Florida and the rest of the industry. Many, many years ago, the state of Florida, in its wisdom, decided to start an apiary inspection program, realizing how important honeybees were to Florida agriculture and for honey production. This is a key industry. This is a key niche of Florida agriculture and it wanted to protect that part of agriculture. Because as you know, without honeybees, a third of the food you and I eat every day would disappear. And specifically in Florida, just think of all the fruits, nuts, and vegetables that would disappear, blueberries, strawberries, uh, some citrus, and all the garden crops, and then think of all the fruits, nuts, and berries that honeybees pollinate by accident that feed Florida wildlife that uh, bring so many people to the state of Florida. The state of Florida has implemented a registration and inspection program. We have 14 
inspectors that are assigned to regions in the state of Florida that will partner with you to register you and inspect you so that you can control these devastating pest predators and diseases.